disappearance of Jamie Fraley is still under investigation. Jamie Michelle Fraley was born on March the 5th, 1986 in Gaston County, North Carolina. From the onset, she was someone who defied the odds. She was a sickly newborn who many believed wouldn't make it past the age of one, but she did. She was later diagnosed with bipolar and anxiety disorders. She took medication to manage both and is said to have responded well. Jamie was a firecracker with a big heart and a passion for helping others. While known to be feisty at times, she was a sweet and intelligent girl. This led her to pursue a career as a substance abuse counselor, for which she was studying part-time at Gaston College alongside getting her GED. At the time of her disappearance, Jamie was engaged to Ricky Simmons Jr. The pair began dating in 2006 and not long after began living together at the Copperfield Apartment Complex at 1850 Lowell Bethesda Road in Gastonia. Ricky was known to law enforcement and in 2007 was sentenced to 15 months for theft. Her family shared their concerns about him with Jamie, but she chose to stay, writing Ricky daily and visiting him in prison. On April the 7th, 2008, Jamie was suffering from what doctors believed to be the stomach flu, for which she'd gone to the hospital twice. The first time was around lunchtime. When she returned home, her friend picked up a dog Jamie had been babysitting for her and offered to drop her off a prescription at a local drugstore. Between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m., Jamie decided she needed to return to the emergency room, unhappy with her previous diagnosis. As she didn't have a driver's license or method of transportation, she called her fiancé's father, Ricky Simmons Sr., for a ride. When she arrived at the hospital, she was told to wait three hours. She decided to leave and called another neighbor to ask for a ride back to her apartment. Jamie got home around midnight and called her mother. Concerned, Kim Fraley, her mother, asked if she wanted picked up the next day. Her daughter declined, saying she had an appointment with the Social Security Administration. Two hours later, Jamie called a friend and told them someone was going to pick her up and take her to back to the hospital. However, she didn't say who that person was and abruptly hung up when they pulled up outside. Jamie never appeared at the hospital that third time. On April the 9th, 2008, a healthcare provider arrived at Jamie's apartment to take her to her appointment with the Social Security Administration, but found that her door was locked. When Jamie failed to answer calls to her cell phone, the provider left, but failed to notify her family for two days. On April the 11th, Kim called the police and asked them to perform a welfare check on her daughter. When an officer arrived at her apartment, he found no signs of forced entry or a struggle. After numerous attempts to reach Jamie via her cell phone, Kim, Jamie's aunt, and her cousin entered the apartment and found her purse, wallet, keys, and identification. She'd also vomited in several places, indicating the severity of her stomach issues. Then they noticed the shoelaces were missing from her favorite pair of shoes, which struck them as odd. Kim once again called the police, this time to file a missing persons report. The Gaston County Police Department assigned three investigators to the case full-time and requested assistance from the State Bureau of Investigation and the FBI. They interviewed Jamie's friends and family and conducted door-to-door -door conversations with residents of the apartment complex. The area around the complex was searched, including a nearby wooded area. Divers and cadaver dogs also searched Lake Armstrong, located across the street, but their efforts turned up empty. On April 13, 2008, a utilities worker repairing lines at the intersection of South New Hope Road and East Hudson Boulevard found Jamie's cell phone. It appeared to have been thrown from a moving vehicle. When investigators looked at it, they found several calls were made at 4.30 a.m. on the morning Jamie disappeared, but none connected. They were, they were later determined to have been dialed from her list of recent contacts and therefore not related to the case. What did interest investigators was a call made to the phone at 5 a.m. that same day. Unfortunately, they were unable to determine who it was from. Due to the amount of people who had handled the cell phone, investigators were unable to glean much from it. Search dogs were brought to the intersection where it was found, but they didn't hit on anything. Jamie's family made thousands of missing persons for liars, conducted their own searches, and hired their own investigator to aid in the search. 
Both Texas EquiSearch and the Kristen Foundation traveled to North Carolina in 2010. A billboard funded by the Kristen Foundation was installed along highway number I-85 to help awareness about the case. The family made attempts to enlist the help of forensic path psychologist Maurice Goodwin in 2012, but he was denied access to Jamie's case file. The police department cited the ongoing investigation as the reason for the denial. A few years later, after Jamie's disappearance, an individual sent Cam a photo of a woman from a website advertising female escorts on the West Coast. But investigators contacted local authorities and they tracked down the female in the picture and it was not Jamie. Investigators don't believe Jamie left on her own accord as it is uncharacteristic of her to leave without warning. Due to the lack of evidence, no charges have been filed. However, foul play is suspected. Her DNA is available for comparison should her body be found. A reward is being offered for information that solves the case. On June the 8th, 2008, one of Simmons Sr.'s ex-girlfriends found his body in the trunk of her car. Before his death, she filed a restraining order against him for theft. She told police she noticed a foul order emanating from her trunk, and when she opened it, she found his body. He had her keys in his pocket and her purse beside him. Investigators believe that he'd hid in the trunk to her, bush her, but he got trapped inside and died of heat stroke. Kim has kept a box of her daughter's belongings, which includes a poem Jamie wrote. She shared she suffered from depression in the months following Jamie's depression, disappearance, for which she sought therapy. Jamie Michelle Fraley, Fraley, a white female, went missing from the Copperfield Apartment Complex in Gastonia, Gaston County, North Carolina, on April the 8th, 2008. She was 22 years old and was possibly wearing a large white t-shirt and blue jeans. At the time of her disappearance, she stood 4 feet 9 inches tall and weighed approximately 90 to 100 pounds. She has strawberry blonde hair and either and blue eyes. The name Ricky is tattooed on her right ankle. Fraley has a uh, from bipolar disorder and an anxiety disorder, which she needs to be taking medicine for these conditions, but was apparently off her medication at the time of her disappearance. In addition, Fraley was suffering from stomach flu at the time of her disappearance. She always wanted to help people, Kim said. It was her nature. Kim said that for years she could barely get out of bed, but was determined to keep her going for the rest of her family. Someone knows something, she said. What if it was your daughter, your sister, your child? It's time to come forward. Kim added that she's never going to give up, searching for her answers in her daughter's disappearance. Until you show me different, I'm going to have to have hope that she's alive, Kim said, and she'll keep up the struggle. As the year has passed, Jamie's disappearance continues to be one of the un only a few unsolved areas cases in the area, investigators say. It was one of my goals when I returned to work as a commander here, Captain Downey says. I wanted to, us to do whatever we could to solve these cold cases. He added that there is extensive records on Jamie's case, which include every tip they have ever followed over the past years, but they are still missing that one tip that one tip from somebody who knows what happened to Jamie that would finally give her mother some answers. Those with information regarding the case are asked to contact the Gaston County Police Department at either 704-866-3320 or 704-866-3334 or 704-866-3300. Tips can also be called into the FBI at 1-704-672-6100 or anonymously via the Crime Stoppers at 1-800-861-8000.